what I like about Kane is this approach that he has. He has kind of a, almost a classical and academic um, background that is very strong, but he's able to transform that into something else, uh, very contemporary, and he's got an incredible energy that uh, um, totally transports us. And uh, it's something that I really hope uh, people will be able to see uh, in the exhibition. And I am sure it will have a very bright future ahead. And he's only 26 years old. Legacy. What's going to be my mark on the art world? How am I going to affect it? What changes am I going to implement on the art world? I don't have an answer for you right now. That's to be determined. I'm sure other people will have something to say about that in the future. But really, I feel like I'm just getting started. And I've got so much to, to learn and improve and explore, so many places to go, people to meet. Um, I'm still just trying to survive out here at the moment. So, in terms of legacy and statement and impact on the art world, I don't know. I was very shy as a child. I couldn't even look adults in the eye. Um, I'd, my mum used to say, OK, you can, you can get an ice cream after school if you walk in to class today and look your teacher in the eye and say good morning, I'll be very proud of you. Because it was so difficult for me, I would just feel so self-conscious, like everyone was judging me, I felt this heavy weight on my shoulders. From a very young age, I didn't want to go to nursery, I never liked school. I went to five different schools growing up, didn't like any of them, I just wanted to be home, I didn't, very antisocial. Um, painting was definitely an excuse for me to, to be alone. I used for many years. I've always been really encouraged. I've been really lucky in that sense with from family and friends and teachers I've had. Um, even in school, it'd be like I bring a bring a drawing into my art class, um, and everyone would gather around the table and look at it and go, "Wow, look what Kane drew!" And this this was my success growing up. This is what I was good at. And this is what I was known for. So I kind of ran with it. If you're lucky enough to have something like that, maybe some kids are athletes, others are really good at math, others are great with computers. If you're good at it, just run with it. If you have a natural inclination to do something. And I feel like we all actually start that way. We all have a natural inclination to, to mark make, especially as children. But really, after traveling so much and losing so many relationships and friends and it's the one thing that's always been there. So I have to, I love it, I always prioritize it. I wanted to do my own thing with Michelangelo's David. I've seen so many paintings and sculptures done of them, especially in Florence, they're absolutely everywhere. You can get David on a key ring, on a postcard. Because it was a, such an astonishing piece to see in person. It's just gigantic. And I did some research, I looked into the story behind it and how David was about to fight Goliath. And I looked at the, the marble sculpture by Michelangelo and thought, yeah, it's, it's so beautiful, David's so soft, his expression was so calm, but I thought if he's about to go, on, go to war with Goliath, shouldn't he, shouldn't he be ready to die? Shouldn't he be in one of the darkest places you could possibly be? Um, so that's what I kind of wanted to depict with this painting. I wanted him to be more aggressive, more... Uh, a darker depiction of the story, really, but also give respect to the incredible sculpture by Michelangelo. David's right hand, how it was resting on his thigh, reminded me, just seemed very primal, very animalistic, and I wanted to have a bit more of that, so I 
and mirrored his right hand to the left. And it created this sort of this composition that I really liked. I don't really see him as a devil, maybe more of a more as a an angel. As you can still see some of the pencil marks, the Conte marks and beneath the paint. I didn't quite like that red, I like those earth tones, so I decided to just keep building on that and deepen it through lots of transparent layers of magentas and browns and oranges. As you can see in the drawing, the hands are really heavy, sort of ape-like, so I want to kind of create this effect as well in the painting. You know how I love Tarzan, you know how he used to walk on his knuckles, I think that's coming through as well. Painting, I wanted him to be a bit more, a bit more aggressive, more movement, more animalistic, more primal, which is what war is. Violent. I just feel like I be now, after doing it for so long, I feel like I just belong everywhere I go. I'm quite confident walking down the street. Just, yeah, just realise that we're all the same in many ways. We all feel hungry, all feel tired. We can all relate on so many different levels. If you don't speak the language, but you want to communicate something to someone, you use hand gestures. It's very primal, very, very basic communication, but you survive okay in these situations and people in general I believe are very hospitable and nice and friendly and with that attitude I feel like I can go anywhere and without any judgement whereas I feel like if I was to stay in one place I feel nervous about going to different places about how people would see me or if I was doing something wrong whereas now I'm not worried about mistakenly offending a different culture. Mm -hmm. I just trust them to tell me not to do something and then I won't do it. Mm -hmm. I've been in much more stressful situations than anything that can happen, really. I feel like I've been through so much that I'm quite calm in, in most situations, if that makes sense. I, it's not too hectic. It needs, it needs to be very hectic for me to feel stressed. Mm -hmm. I'm very laid back. If I'm ever in a stress stressful situation these days, I just think back to what I've managed to overcome and uh, no longer seems so, so challenging. Mm -hmm. In the end, you're alone and you're responsible for your own emotions and your own self and your own well-being. You can't rely on anyone else. Um, so take care of yourself. That was, that was my biggest lesson really to prioritise myself, and I was very selfish in a way, and very fortunate to be able to do that, but I think what a lot of disappointments and hardships come down to is lack of communication or relationships falling, falling out, and if you end up alone and you're quite happy being by yourself, then not much can really put you down. I used to walk a lot in Glasgow, but now more I go, I walk out, I go running along the river, cycling. The bike has really changed everything. During lockdown, I bought a second-hand road bike and I realised I can travel so far. And there's so many little towns around Pisa in this area. It's so nice to go and visit. 
some local cafes, cycle through the countryside, see the animals. And uh, yeah, cycling, really. That's what I do now. And that really calms me down, clears the mind, gets me out in the fresh air. It's very convenient and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, even small things like this, this area along the, along the river called the Piaggio. It's just so nice to go running down and you see the seasons change and this is a beautiful park next to quite a big river, the, the Arno, which all goes all the way to Florence. Now the Giro is what I believe to be the secret to happiness. It's what we don't have in Scotland because it's so cold and rainy all the time. The Giro, Italians call it, is just walking around town, bumping into people you know, drinking a coffee, maybe a spritz, and just chatting with the locals. It's the secret to happiness. It creates community, it creates a sense of belonging, which I think is really missing from back home. But yeah, that's my favorite thing to do. Walk around, chat to people that I know, whether it's in bars, restaurants, or just walking around town, it's a small place. So yeah, Giro is the secret. <laughs> Since moving to Pisa, I've been really trying to work on the, the surface quality of my paintings. I really love how the walls here in Pisa are faded, they're cracked, and a lot of the frescoes are like falling off the wall. They hold the history of the city. So I'm wanting to sort of create the same surface quality in my, my paintings by building up layers upon layers of paint and then scraping back or sanding paper bag to reveal the hidden colours that lie beneath. And it kind of holds the history of the city. Um, not just Pisa, but many historic Italian towns. So I wanted to kind of work on recreating that surface quality in my paintings. There's a vulnerability to it. You can see where I've scraped away and just gone over different marks and just built the surface up. If I feel like a painting's going in the right direction, I'm happy with it and I'm not too worried about what others think. I feel compelled to, to make these marks and they speak to people in different ways, which I feel is very interesting. And um, everyone sees their own things in the figures. I want to find a balance between sort of abstract, expressive mark making, which is very emotional, very direct, very primal, with more realistic, objective objects within the paintings. I feel like the correct balance between these two aspects can create something that's recognisable, that people can relate to, but also unique and original through my own expression with the marks I, and composition I choose. The urge to create, what does it feel like? Without it, I feel empty, so I need to do it in order to feel fulfilled, in order to feel like my life is moving forward. When something becomes beyond a habit, it becomes your identity almost. So much value and struggle.
don't take the easy way. Do what you love. And if you don't have anything you love, just try lots of different things and travel. Because if you have the time to try new things, you're in a good position.